You are listening to the 90 Days Later podcast with Anna Charles. This is episode number six. Welcome to the 90 Days Later podcast where I show you how to stop over drinking in 90 days without missing out on life. If you're not an alcoholic but fed up with saying yes to a drink when you mean to say no, you're in the right place. Hi all, hope you're all well. So I'm recording this on Monday morning and my goodness, it's such a bright, sunny start to the week. I went out for a run this morning and it was just one of those glorious autumn days. To be out running with a clear head before the sun is up is one of the rewards of giving up drinking, one of my favourite rewards. Oh, it's such an amazing thing. Now last week I spoke about the topic of when you think it's boring to stop drinking and strategies to help you deal with those thoughts. Today I want to talk about other people and specifically other people's opinions. It turns out they have a lot to say, especially when it comes to somebody giving up drinking. And I find this is a barrier for lots of people and it certainly was so for me. Dealing with other people's reactions was in many ways harder than all the thought work I had to do on myself when I first decided I wanted to drink less. Now, initially when I told people, their first reaction was that I was mad. I mean, why would I want to do that? Why would I want to drink less? I faced all sorts of comments. I mean, people just didn't get it. It's not that they were trying to not be supportive, they just didn't understand. And this barrage of reaction initially put me off and I went back to my old habits. I tried to make the changes, really, but I, at that time, looking back, I really wasn't that committed. So I wanted to talk about this today. I wanted to talk about how I got over that and three ways you can start taking action straight away today if you find yourself faced with other people's opinions that are somehow keeping you stuck. First, I want to step back and talk about opinions and we all have them and they're formed by many things. It's a very complex topic. They're formed by things like our experience, our upbringing, our family values, the people we hang out with and all sorts of things. And also though by society. And when it comes to society, drink is totally normalised. Alcoholic drink is totally normalised. As I said, when I started to give up drinking, I faced a barrage of opinions and questions and people just didn't get it. But consider the same conversation. If you were to say you wanted to give up smoking or drugs or gambling, it would probably be seen by most, if not all people, as a good thing, makes sense. But give up the booze? Are you mad? Now, this used to annoy me, right? But then I realised that this reaction makes perfect sense. Because your friends, your family, your spouse, your colleagues, they're all subject to the same influences in society about alcohol as you are, as I am. And these influences are almost exclusively positive. That alcohol is fun. That cracking open a bottle of crisp white at a barbecue is just the thing for a sunny day. That sipping mulled wine in the winter is part of the seasonal pleasure at the end of the year. So it's understandable how my decision to drink less was seen as frankly a bit weird. It went against the societal norm. But rationalising things in this way didn't always make it any easier for me to deal with other people's opinions. And when it became clear that I really was serious about modifying my drinking, well then the heat was turned up another notch. It'll be boring without you drinking. Who am I going to drink with? But we always have cocktails when we go to the theatre. Now, looking at these comments, they were made at me. But what they were, what the people were really telling me was the impact of my decision on them. And that's what they were railing against. And this held more than a whiff of my being responsible for their life, for their enjoyment and pleasure. And now this can stop many a person in their tracks. And I want to unpick that in this podcast. But before we even get into what this means for drinking, I thought it might be helpful to recognise how you're already reacting to and accommodating other people's opinions in other areas of your life, perhaps without even knowing you're doing it. Something as small as saying yes to someone at work when you really want to say no, because you feel guilty about them having too much to do, even though your plate isn't exactly empty. Something like going out to a party when you'd rather stay in, 
because your partner really wants to go and they don't want to be alone. Watch out for this kind of behaviour. Watch out for when you make decisions and take action based on other people's needs, often above your own. You tell yourself you're doing this for the right reasons, that you're being selfless, putting others first. Now, there may be situations when you truly don't mind whether you, for instance, go to the party or not, whether you have your mother-in-law around to stay or not. And that's fine, right? That's fine to make those decisions. But when you make decisions that go against what you want solely to please the other person, then you're on sticky ground. And this is what many people come up against when they try to cut back their drinking or even just try to change their drinking patterns a little at first. So why do we do this? Well, it's, I generally find it's one of three reasons. It's either because we want to be liked or we're seeking approval from outside of ourselves. We fear to be judged or we're trying to avoid discomfort. And so instead of feeling any of these three or putting ourselves in front of any of these three uh, situations, instead we hide. We don't put ourselves out there because we're afraid of what people will think about us. We're afraid of what our husband or our friends or colleagues will think. But here's the thing, the crazy thing. You can be the most amazing, kind, caring person and somebody can have a negative opinion about you. We care about what others think, even though we never really know what they really think about us, about what their true opinion of us is. You can have no idea what people are thinking because we don't mind read. Even if they tell us what they're thinking, we don't know that they're not lying. So what you're really dealing with when you're worried about people's opinions is you're dealing with your perception of their opinions, right? People hold themselves back because of a perception of other people's opinions, not even their actual opinions, but their perception of others' opinions. Just think about that for a moment. Now, most people, if shown this about themselves, would admit it's not what they really want, that they just want to be who they are and that's it. But we're so afraid of being who we really are because we're so afraid that people will judge us. But here's what I figured out. They're already judging us. You can do what you believe to be right in every single situation, not put a step wrong and people will judge you anyway. They're already judging us. And if they're not judging us, they're indifferent to us. And that can feel even worse. So people are going to look at you and judge you. People are going to judge you because of the way you look, because of your weight, what you wear, how you drive, who you decided to marry, where you live, the way you speak, and what you drink or don't drink. All of it. There's nothing that anybody can do about it. So why do we go around spending so much time worrying about something we have no control over? It's nuts. So here's an alternative and something I want you to do instead. I want you to ask yourself these questions and you might want to write them down at this point. First, what is your opinion of you? Second, how strongly are you willing to commit to that opinion of you? Third, are you willing to have your own back when someone else is wrong about you? Because if you believe your opinion is true, then anyone who doesn't agree with you is wrong. Now, some of you might think this sounds braggy. I'm right, they're wrong. But think about it. You're already doing this just in reverse. You're already accepting other people's opinions as right, doing what they want and relegating your opinions to second place. They're telling you you're boring when you say you don't want to split a bottle of wine. So instead you go ahead and drink the bottle. You're making them right and yourself wrong. But this isn't even really about being right or wrong. It's about having a strong sense of who you are. Being your number one fan, as corny as that sounds. Having your own back. This happened to me with drinking. At some point... I decided that I wanted to answer to myself and stop doing what was acceptable to other people. And I just decided to start telling the truth about myself, about how much I wanted or didn't want to drink. This is where I achieved freedom. This is when it all changed for me and the same can be true for you. This is when you really get to be who you are, to really decide how you want to show up in your life when you stop worrying about other people's opinions of you.
then you can really start to dream and take action towards those dreams. Because if you were previously afraid of failing because of what others might think, well, who cares what they'll think? Who cares if you fail? People will have an opinion about your failure regardless. Wouldn't it be wonderful if you just didn't care what people thought about you? Ask, what is your opinion of you? That's what I'm interested in. What do you think about what you're about to do? What do you believe about you? What do you want to believe about you? What do you want to believe you're capable of? What do you choose to drink? What do you want that to mean about you? That's what I care about. And I strongly recommend that's what you care about too. Now, you know me by now, I like to have a practical element to this podcast. So here are three approaches I suggest you take if you find yourself worrying about or even paying lots of attention to other people's opinions when it comes to your drinking. Now, and you will notice, by the way, that these don't explicitly apply just to drinking. As so much of the work I do with my clients on helping them make permanent change to their drinking habit, these solutions work in all areas of your life too. First, get to know yourself. If you've been putting other people's ahead of your own for a while, you may not even know what you want or like. You may not really even know yourself very well. Sounds crazy, but it can be true. Small things like what you like to eat, how you want to style your hair, or even what your favourite food is. That stuff all matters. Grab a pen and write about yourself as though introducing you to someone for the first time. Second, learn how to like yourself exactly as you are right now. This is a big one for increasing your sense of self-respect and it feeds into getting to know what you want to do and how you want to spend your time. If you consistently put other people's opinions first to feel good about yourself, start getting this from you instead. See yourself in a new light. See that you are capable. And then you get to decide what's best for yourself. Then you don't need to justify yourself to anyone. You can decide to quit drinking and not feel obliged to explain that decision to anyone. Write down what is great about you, how you honour yourself every day. This is no time for being humble, my friend. I want you to get it all down. Be your biggest fan. You don't have to show this paper to anyone, but I do think it's really important. You learn to grow a strong sense of who you are. Third, lean into discomfort. Get used to doing this. And this means saying no to other people. This means taking active decisions for yourself, not based on what's easy or what someone else wants but on you. This means saying no to the party invitation if you'd rather stay in. This means not settling for less when it comes to your career. This means being willing to be visible and to not worrying about others think of you. This means saying you prefer not drinking and that's that when you're called boring for giving up alcohol. Doing this may feel scary. In fact, it probably will. But think about it. When you make decisions from a place of fear, based on what someone else wants and it's not your own desires, then you're costing yourself your relationship with yourself and ultimately with your dreams. And I know which I'd rather have. In summary, so many people struggle to move forward in their lives because they're afraid what other people might think about them. This holds them back when they change their drinking. I see it all the time. They worry that others will think they have a problem and that that's why they're trying to drink less. They think that other people will think they're an alcoholic and judge them for it. Don't be worried about what other people might think about you. After all, you aren't ever going to know for sure anyway. Don't be afraid to be you. Making active choices is a habit and a skill. Clear your head of what you should do and ask what you want. This is how you create your own life rather than passively live in the one you have. There's a huge difference. Because when you stop believing other people's opinions, you get to have a relationship with yourself where you put the whole of you into the world, where you're not trying to hold yourself back or modify yourself in some way because of what others think. Let other people think it's boring of you to not drink. What does that matter? Other people's opinions are none of your business. Okay, that's it for me this week. And before next week, in the meantime, I'm offering a free online masterclass on how to stop over drinking. 
The link is right there in the show notes and I've created it especially for you. I do hope you find it useful. Thank you for listening. Please rate and review the podcast and share it with someone you love. If you have any questions, you can reach me at anna at 90dayslater.co. See you next week. If you want to achieve total freedom around alcohol fast, having a coach is the way to make it happen. So I'm inviting you to a discovery call to see if we'd be a good fit. This is a completely free of charge, no strings attached call. You can sign up in the show notes or by emailing anna at 90dayslater.co. And if you enjoyed the show, I'd really appreciate if you'd leave a rating and review to help others find the 90 Days Later podcast.